loves welcome back today i'm going to be doing my july books video for you obviously it's almost the end of august so you will be getting an august books in the next couple of weeks i'm hoping because i'm going to film it imminently i have it planned in so it's going to come to you um in the next couple of weeks. We're a bit condensed on the summer reading book videos um, but I hope that you guys will enjoy anyway. Now because I read quite a lot of these on a sunbed whilst I was away I do not have as many notes as I usually do so I don't quite know how well I'm going to be able to talk about today's books. Next month's book club so you've only got a couple of weeks to read this if you do want to join in. I have specifically picked quite a slim book to read um, and it's one I really enjoyed. I've obviously already read it because we are at the end of August. Um, so I picked one that I really enjoyed and I hope that you guys will enjoy it as well. Um, a little bit, quite a lot different from a, pretty much all the books that I've ever picked for book club before. But this is Invisible Cities by Italo Calvino. It was written in the 70s, I believe. And it's basically um, a lot of little kind of prose poems kind of describing like meditations probably a good way to describe them um of various different cities described by a character named marco polo um and he's talking to kublai khan um who they're both obviously historical figures though it's not necessarily very historically accurate um but the two of them are discussing cities the idea of cities and um the descriptions of the cities are very beautiful but we'll talk about that more next video um and i will let you discover this for yourself it's a really gorgeous little book and you could get through it in an afternoon easily um so I highly recommend this one and it's next month's book club book this month's book club book was alice munro's the progress of love um i loved this book but i am kind of completely stuck as to what to say about it for once but if you guys read this i really hope you enjoyed it as much as i did i read a lot of good books this month but it's probably one of my favorites so it's a book of short stories um they are all set in kind of in rural canada uh, rural ontario and it kind of they cover kind of family relationships the tensions that underlie all of that um, history and the inheritance of trauma about small town life both the good and the bad sometimes closed-mindedness sometimes community and family or kind of what we owe to others that's what these stories kind of cover um, and they are really really beautifully written very subtle you can tell there's a lot going on, on underneath the words and there's a lot of tension kind of built throughout all of the stories which really keeps you interested and I would be, I think someone has said this actually on the back of this book, but I felt it when I was reading it as well, um, that some of the stories almost feel novel-like. They're so kind of rich and um, like perfectly formed that they have, they really feel kind of full and like novel-like. Anne Tyler's actually said this on the back of this book. Some of her short stories are so ample and fulfilling that they feel like novels. They present whole landscapes and cultures, whole families of characters. Um, so yeah, they're really believable, but also very, um, but they're kind of not bogged down in realism. She kind of has some sort of magic touch where she really brings it all to life. I thought the stories towards the end of the collection were a little bit less focused, um, and the ones at the beginning were really, really, really strong. Obviously, the first story you read I think is the title um, story and it's probably one of the best ones it's incredible I just think her writing is really 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 good I think she specializes only in short stories I'm not sure if she does have novels correct me if I'm wrong um, but I will be reading all of her other collections that's she's on my list now um, of authors to kind of read their work basically um i really really loved it and i think she's truly a master of the short story i know we did raymond carver's book of short stories last time which had all that kind of his language is much tauter much more refined um but i prefer just personally i prefer alice munro's because she has she gives a little bit more room to think about a few more kind of ideas she kind of covers a bit more um so i find them much more fulfilling as short stories personally I, I don't kind of race through them put them down and be like that was good but not amazing whereas this i'm like this is really amazing so big 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 fan i'm glad that we did this for book club and that you guys read something really really good okay so we're going to go through everything else in like the order that i read it as usual I'm already losing things so this book is kind of like that kind of it was good but very short i kind of put it down and probably wouldn't 
describe it as a favourite, but it was really good. It's The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. Um, it's about a girl growing up in the Hispanic quarter of Chicago, and it's basically a series of very short vignettes um, about her life and growing up and coming of age as a Latina girl in Chicago. And yeah, I really like the themes in this book. I liked the focus on women in general um, and the way that they kind of survive in this world. Um, what Cisneros is saying about the kind of patriarchal structure of life there. Um, I said it was effective, good writing, simple, spare language. There's lots of kind of warm community moments, kind of funny moments, but also, you know, moments of violence. It's about writing a community and this kind of space and place, like a kind of world, which I think she does really well. And yeah, I liked all the kind of natural images. And obviously it's kind of about a house. So I was wondering kind of what the difference between Esperanza, who's the main character's, view of a house is versus other women's view of the house because obviously that's a kind of domestic arena so I thought all of that was really good it's a really lovely piece of writing but as I said um, the reason it's probably not a favourite is just because it is short it is a series of vignettes um, I personally tend to find I can't really like love a book that's kind of I can read so quickly but yeah I really enjoyed it and it's a good piece of writing and if any of those themes or whatever sound interesting to you then I would definitely recommend it. Okay, we did a couple of crime novels um, this month. So I've got Harlan Coben's Fool Me Once. It's about a woman who practically witnesses her husband's death um, only to see him appear on the nanny cam a couple of days later or after his funeral. I think this was a really well paced novel, um, the action was good, it kept me wanting to read. Harlan Coben's renowned for his twists and turns, so there were a few of those. Um, compared to lots of crime novels or thrillers or whatever, it didn't have as many eye-rolling moments. There are always a few that you're like, um, <laughs> but it really didn't have that many and it was just assured and strong. Yeah, it kept me interested and kept me reading. Um, so, and I've definitely, I've read a couple of his before and I always enjoy them. Um, some are better than others, I think. But yeah, I enjoyed this one. The ending was completely ridiculous, but um, I'm more than willing to uh, to give him the benefit of the doubt because I really enjoyed this book and I thought it was a good read. I mean, compared to Snap, which was um, nominated for the Booker Award last year, this is like a million times better. I don't know how they picked that novel as the crime novel to read because it's just such a bad example of the genre, I feel. But anyway. Um, another kind of crime, thriller, mystery novel. This is A Rising Man by Abir Mukherjee. Um, my aunt gave me this one and she gave me a couple so I actually have read the other one in August. So I can't, so I must have liked it. This is, um, yeah, the first in a series of like kind of following a particular detective. Um, and it's set in Calcutta in um, the colonial period and it follows a detective from Scotland Yard who kind of arrives in Calcutta and he's immediately tasked with investigating the death or the murder of a white man in kind of a shady area of Calcutta basically and all the kind of fallout from that. I thought that uh, again, this was readable, fast paced, the action kind of kept me interested, I kept wanting to read it. Not too many random red herrings, which is something I would say about Fool Me Once as well, compared to something like Snap. There's not so many moments which are just like obviously red herrings. It is willing to tackle issues of race and colonialism, um, possibly a little bit too simplistically, but um, yeah, I'm glad that it's in there because I don't think I'd want to read a book just about that period of time, even if it is supposed to be kind of sheer entertainment, I don't think I'd want to read it without that being in there. I do think it gets a little bit uncomfortable at times, um, but then again, I think Abu Mukherjee is clearly trying to give an accurate portrayal of, you know, a white detective's view of the world at the time. I think the second one is better, but we'll talk about that next month. Um, but yeah, I think it was good. I think if that sounds like your kind of thing, then it 
then you should definitely pick it up if you're interested in the period of history there's a fair amount in here um, i think it's a good yeah a, another good kind of example of the genre um next we have probably my least favorite book this month so i'm not going to talk about it for too long it's called the year 1000 it's by robert lacey and danny danziger um it's about what life was like at the turn of the first millennium so yeah it's non-fiction it it's just a bit bizarre like it's set around a calendar which doesn't really work because they've clearly like they have observed the Julius work calendar and then decided to make that the form of the book but I just have no idea why it doesn't really work at all um, it's very simplistic it's kind of patronizing towards the people that lived at the time yeah it's just like proper popular history but I just find it really irritating when they don't go into like the nuances of things um it's okay it's all right read i think i bought this when i was studying so this is how long ago i bought this book i think i bought this when i was studying the norman conquest at um at school in history and i studied i bought this to kind of read as background but actually i think i quickly realized even at the time that it was way too um simplified so I never read it and then I decided to read it now because it was popular when it was first released. It was published in 1999 and I said throughout that it, it clearly speaks to 1999 and the turn of the millennium, um, very much so um, compared to kind of what it's actually saying about the year 1000. So if you are writing a history piece or something and you want a piece of writing that's really describing 1999 or something um then maybe this would be interesting but apart from that i have no idea why you would read this over something that has a little bit more detail um next we have a russian novel a big fat novel as well this is probably my biggest yeah this month um this is generations of winter by vasily Aksionov. i'm sorry if i'm saying that wrong i really 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 liked this um I don't know if it will be for everyone. It's very Russian because it's like long and detailed and it kind of it's epic and you know people keep comparing it all over this book to War and Peace. Anyway, I'll describe what happens in it first. So it's about a family in at the Stalinist regime. I think it's 1925 to I don't know when it goes up to. I can't remember now. 1945 think and it basically just follows their lives as they try and navigate the madness that was the Stalinist regime and the illogic of it. They are or were a middle class family um, and because they're kind of of the professional class like the grandfather or the father is a doctor um, which I believe Aksionov himself his family were doctors maybe and the kind of first son is a soldier quite a high up soldier you do get some historical figures so you get real generals you get Stalin a little bit in there so this book really immerses you into that world into the family's world he writes very good characters they're kind of flawed but real and you love them and you your heart breaks with them i didn't find it slow even though it's super long my copy is is almost 600 pages but it's also like tiny writing um so it is a long book but i really didn't find it that it dragged at any point i was interested the whole way through which i think is a huge achievement that is incredibly hard to do so yeah there was lots going on i was interested in all the different characters viewpoints i said any awkwardness that there could be in the writing is definitely chalked up to translating the russian to english but generally there's not much problem there at all i do think to get the most out of this novel then you should know a little bit about the period at least um and just about russia in general and i think um it really i don't know just something about the writing really feels russian to me in a, in a great way but yeah it's moving it's ironic it's funny it's satire a lot of the time it does have they do there is a list of characters at the back um, which is helpful. I wish I'd found it sooner because obviously Russians have a different way of kind of naming and also speaking to one another naming wise so that can be a bit confusing but yeah there is um, a glossary and a list of names at the back but I didn't actually realise that for ages um, but that is helpful. It's at times a light and funny, it's at other times completely heartbreaking. I really really liked it and would recommend it to you guys so if you're looking for a big, I think it was the nine, mid 90s this was released. So if you're looking for a big contemporary um, Russian novel, 
then I would recommend this one. Next we've got Nowhere Man, which I really did read kind of in bits and bobs whilst I was in Portugal with my friends. So yeah, I'm definitely not gonna be able to speak on this one very usefully. So this follows, so this is kind of about the siege of Sarajevo. Um, well it is about well it's not really about that so the main character leaves Sarajevo just before the siege begins and finds himself stranded in America basically and it switches between various different narrators talking about this guy and his life growing up in Sarajevo um, his kind of year abroad because it's obviously called nowhere man it's kind of about um, particular discombobulating nature of of that particular um, conflict. But the anyway, so the writing in this is absolutely gorgeous. People have compared it to Nabokov. Um, I do think they are different, but I kind of see where they're getting that from. Um, sometimes it's a bit like too much, but the writing in general is really, really beautiful. I can't really describe it, but if you know Nabokov, you'll know that it's a little bit, it's like very rich and um, unusual sometimes and shocking and it's just yeah it's really great so I will definitely be following um, Alexander Hemmen more because I really love his writing I think it's great I think this is his debut novel I think he's only done short stories before this yeah the New York Times said Hemmen can't write a boring sentence and the English language is richer for it the story I found the character that we kind of follow throughout Joseph Proneck is um, is really lovable and like he really creates a very believable and also very warm character there. It's a little bit bitty, um, I don't know if, that, if that's just how I read it, but it's a bit like jumping over the, all over the place, partially possibly because of the, those different narrators. Um, but in general I thought it was a really good book and well worth a read. The ending was completely bizarre and I didn't really get it, I don't know if it's just me but there's like a whole different short story basically on the end of this book, which I'm just, I probably just didn't read it right, but I was confused as to why it was there. <laughs> but I would recommend this, and I think the writing is great. There's lots of funny moments in it. It's quite light as well as dark, um, which all the best books are. It's about the Siege of Sarajevo, but it's also about kind of growing up. And it's also obviously about growing up at that particular time in history. Really like this one and would highly recommend it. Now we have got my first ever cutsy. This is Disgrace by J.M. Cutsy. Don't know if I'm saying that right. Very possibly I'm not saying that right. He is a South African author, very famous one. So this is set in post-apartheid South Africa. It's about a, a university professor who he has a affair with a student and ends up kind of in disgrace and going to see his daughter in the countryside and living with her for a bit. It is dangerous there and um, things happen. Um, this novel is very much about moral grey areas, um, about yeah moral issues and how to navigate them. Obviously with regard to apartheid, even though it's not directly about that, it obviously can be read as that very easily, but also just in general. So it's kind of doing both of those things. So the first part is definitely interrogating scandal in general, like what happens when, what happens with scandal, um, it's about exploitation and power. What does true repentance look like? How much of it is performative? Um, and how does this relate to the justice system, to apartheid? Yeah, so I said that it was obviously ta tackling uh, apartheid in its own way but also the philosophies and the ways power and violence are used to hold up re regimes like apartheid. Um, it's about a country in transition because David who's the main character is kind of part of the old guard as like a middle-aged white professor. The world is changing around him basically and he is not changing. Um, it's also about masculinity, feminism. So some people have said, I've looked at some reviews of this, some people have said the dialogue's a bit formulaic because, and sometimes it is, not formulaic, but it's um, almost like they're kind of arguing through the moral problem um, in a possibly slightly unrealistic way, um, which might annoy some of you guys, but I thought it was a great way to tackle the issues that the novel's talking about. This book is not going to be for everyone, it has very violent content so please please be warned about that. It's very distressing in every way and it's very uncomfortable. Some people read this book and say that the conclusion is that everyone's a victim because David, despite his um, pretty awful behaviour, um, also becomes a victim himself. I don't personally read it as 
a redemption of any kind of David or the way he is. But if you, if that kind of thing does bother you, um, because you can read it, that everyone's a victim, then I would be warned reading this one because he is kind of abhorrent, um, particularly in what he does at the beginning of the book. Um, so you're not, I didn't like him throughout. Some people kind of end up sympathising with him. I don't know, if, if that kind of issue it irritates you or worries you then I wouldn't recommend it because yeah it's not you're not going to be a fan however I don't feel like Curtsy writes it so that you do that but I don't know I, if you can read it like that then it doesn't really matter does it I think it's a really good book because it's extremely complex as I've just explained all of that to you but written in a really kind of um, paired back style it's very readable there's nothing kind of complex about the writing itself um, the storyline is gripping so it's kind of putting all of that into quite a short book as you can see which I really appreciate it's really hard to do that um, so I appreciate that you can see what you make of that one but I again I would recommend that one so we've had some good we've had some really good books this month so finally we have William Golding's The Inheritors you can see that this one went for a dip in the pool because it is just mm, I think it might be even going mouldy now this is so if in case you don't recognize his name he wrote lord of the flies obviously an extremely famous book and he this one is about neanderthals follows a group of neanderthals and their kind of first contact with modern homo sapiens and the differences between the two groups now as a piece of history it's almost definitely completely inaccurate but as a kind of prose experiment um, I think this novel is really really interesting but I am a bit conflicted about it because it's kind of for me anyway it was a pretty unenjoyable read um, I know that my my friend was actually reading she's a teacher and she was reading Lord of the Flies whilst just before I started this and she felt this kind of the same way about Lord of the Flies I think so I think it might just be golding um, but anyway so the Neanderthals are quite a peace-loving, family-orientated group. They have a kind of collective consciousness almost, they're not very verbal, um, and they're kind of able to share, I don't know because Golding doesn't describe it, but kind of share images with each other, um, which I thought was really interesting and a really interesting way of thinking about the kind of building blocks of thought and how thought works and how community works. Um, I yeah I liked the way that he kind of tried to describe non-verbal thought through words obviously and then the humans are much more individualistic they are um, much more ambitious but they also have they're much more intelligent so they have um, lots more tools they that they use and yeah but they're more violent so obviously again it's a bit of an indictment of human beings which um, Lord of the Flies also is which I can I can truly sympathise with so however right okay I don't know where to begin with the writing um, so it's definitely going to irritate some people other people are going to think it's absolutely amazing because as I just described it, he's kind of trying to think about non-verbal thought um, through words but this book is painstakingly slow it's kind of moment by moment and lo not a lot happens for quite a lot of the book there is much more action towards the end of it but even then um, it can take like a couple it can take like pages to describe like an arrow or a boat and for a long time I had no idea what I was reading because obviously because Golding's describing them from the Neanderthal's point of view, they have no word for it, they have no concept for it. So as an experiment in how to describe something like that when you have no concept of it, really interesting. As an actual reading experience, too much, like really boring. Um, I don't know if it helps that I was sitting on a sunbed like, oh my god, get me through this book. Um, not the best holiday read. <laughs> yeah, so it can take ages to even work out what the most basic thing is. Um, so you can imagine how the action kind of gets really dispersed amongst all of this like description so yeah I don't really and I'm sure a lot quite a lot of it went over my head as a result because I was just like I'm not spending all this time working out what on earth that is um, yeah it took me I reckon it probably took me about 10-15 pages to work out what the kind of stick with feathers was which it turned out to be an arrow so one of those books that is like clearly very accomplished in various ways but to a casual reader pretty pretty painstaking um 
so read at your own risk this one but it kind of is it is interesting and it's you know a time period not many people not many authors write about um i think that's it you guys i hope that you enjoyed this video um i will be back with my august books soon um there's lots more books to cover although i think this was probably one of my better months august has not been so great for books um so yeah top ones definitely Disgrace, Noah Man, Generations of Winter and The Progress of Love, I reckon, are probably my favourites there. Um, and all of those, I would say, are worth reading in life, in general life. So, yes, thank you guys for watching today and I will see you again very soon. Bye!